Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here in Yosemite. They're going to hang me from some mountain climbing stuff here. I'm here with Jason and Alex. And back there is Josh. And uh, Jason has been climbing for about eight years. Um, Alex has been about, what, two or three years? Three years now. Three years now. We're setting up an anchor. This is the daisy chain. This is a daisy chain. There's an anchor. We're learning all sorts of physics phrases here because this is ideal. I mean, we te I teach this exact pattern right here for the exact reason. Now this particular anchor has three, what are these things called? Three cams under the rock. Each one of them is holding onto the rock with the lateral pressure. And as I pull this way, it opens the cam up. So my weight actually makes the cam hold on with, with more force. The cam is set like this into the rock, and as I pull back on it, I force it open, which causes force in this direction, which increases the friction, preventing it from sliding out. There's three of them in the off chance that one of these does slide out, or maybe part of the rock breaks, that they, there's an equal tension on all three of them. And uh, am I safe in assuming that any one of these could hold my weight? So I've got a three-way support. Any one of them could hold it. I've got three of them. Now, I want the tension to be equal in all of these so that if one breaks, I don't start jerking. And it's the jerking, it's the increased uh, force over a small period of time that would cause so something to break. So I'm trying to keep the forces nice and even. A lot of fun. I'm mountain climbing. Hey, I think I'm going to head up there next. And then I'm going to cut to a scene from uh, Half Dome. <laughs> yeah, this is all going to be cut in, in and out of Half Dome. Then it's off the side of a mountain stuff. I'm going, to, I'm going to be showing these guys up in the top. This is awesome. Now, do all mountain climbers just go by first names, or is that a no. professional thing? <laughs> OK. In mountain climbing, you want to support a weight. The weight is being pulled down equal to mg. If the rope holds you upwards, then the tension must also be equal to the weight. Now in a redundant safety system, it's set up so that your weight downwards is in fact supported by three ropes. So this one doesn't have to withstand your entire weight. It would support a third of it. And the upward component of this one would be a third mg. And the upward component of this tension the upward component would be a third mg. So that the entire tension upwards would also be equal to your weight and hold you securely. But if one of these were to break, then each one of these would only have to support half your weight. And in an ideal situation, any one of them could support your weight. But in a redundant safety system like this, it would look like that. In Yosemite Park, we have a lot of cliffs. At the top of the cliff, you have potential energy. Potential energy is equal to your mass times the pull of gravity times the elevation above some zero level. So down here somewhere is the ground. And so your potential energy is measured from some zero level. If you go off one of these cliffs, that potential energy converts to kinetic energy. And at the bottom, the kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared, would be equal to the potential energy you had in the first place. You could set up an equation that says mgy, mgh we're using here, is equal to 1 half mv squared. First thing you notice is you can cancel out the m's from both sides of the equation. gh is equal to 1 half v squared. 2gh is equal to v squared v is equal to the square root of 2 times the pull of gravity on the planet you are times the height above 0. So as you fall, it gets changed to velocity. We try to avoid velocity. Now in the off chance, our potential energy gets converted into velocity. We've got some velocity. Let's say we start to fall. We want our fall to be caught by a rope so that we don't have to land all the way at the bottom. But in fact, this really uh, won't save us because now that we have some velocity, we have momentum, mass times velocity. And in order to stop something with momentum, you need 
some impulse, some force times time. So anyway, this equation comes from F equals M times A. F equals M, acceleration is change in velocity over time. FT is equal to M delta V. Some force exerted for a period of time takes a mass and changes its velocity. That's where that equation came from. So if we assume that our mass has some velocity, what we want to do is get as little force as possible, so we want to have the most amount of time to stop it. The most amount of time, the least amount of force. So if we got a bungee cord, then he would go sprawling down and have an, he would have an immense amount of time to stop, so there'd be hardly any force at all to stop his momentum. Well, the problem with this scenario is you're going to hit a bunch of rocks on the way down. They really don't want to be jumping from bungee cords. It's not like it's an amusement park ride where there's nothing around. There's all sorts of stuff. So they really don't want a lot of time. They want a little bit of time. And so what they do is they measure the force the body can take. And if you stop a body, it can ex experience a certain amount of force before things start breaking. If you just use one rope around your waist, uh, the truth is you'd probably break your back. So you get this harness thing, and the harness actually attaches to several points on your body. So now this force is distributed over your body, and they determine what this force is. And then they determine how much time it would take to exert that force, and then they get rope that's, sp that's springy, but not too springy. So this is a uh, dynamic rope. It's dynamic because it's made of nylon, and as you weight it, it stretches 7 to 10 percent, depending on the diameter of the rope. This happens to be a 10.2, and it stretches 10 percent when you fall on it. All right. And so that's a, a carefully measured thing, depending on your mass and how far you expect to be falling from. A lot of physics in mountain climbing. It's still crazy, but it's interesting. Hope you had fun. Next time you go out, now you'll know.